Hello and welcome to another video. Um, it's the first one since uh, Cornwall, but uh, I believe it's going to be a good one. You just look at the uh, the carpet of blue behind me. The bluebells are out. I've wanted to come out and do a camp with the bluebells for years, but there's always been something going on that's prevented me going out, and they only last a few weeks. Um, but they are absolutely staggering, and the 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 smell of the perfume of the uh, the flowers is, is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, okay, the format of this video is going to be a bit different because um, the cooking part is going to take about four hours. So I've got to go and do a little bit of wood prep. I've brought, brought wood with me from home as well to help bolster it, and I've got some charcoal too. Um, but uh, I'm pretty confident you'll like the result at the end of it. Um, but yeah, so once I've got the, uh, the fire going and I've got the Dutch oven warming up, um, then I will put the accommodation for tonight up, which is going to be the Haven hammock. Um, I've only used it once between the trees and once on the floor. Um, and I'd, I'm keen to use it again in the trees. Um, I think that there are a few tweaks that I can do to it to make it even more comfortable. Um, I've also, a um, bit of a funny story, I was going to get, when I was down in the New Forest, I had selected two trees that I wanted to put it up between. Unfortunately, the tree straps that come with it weren't big enough. Uh, they weren't long enough. So the gap between the trees was a bit longer than I could actually span the hammock. Um, now I saw on a video that um, Haven do some whoopee slip, whoopee slings, and so I went online and I uh, I found them, and I think they they were about 19 or 20 pounds. So I put them in the basket and went to check out, and the postage was a rather eye-watering 64 pounds, which would have made one pair of whoopee slings 84 quid. So needless to say. I didn't go through with that, and I've got some um, some DD ones, which I think are the uh, the super light ones. But uh, I, I'm going to use those today because um, I've I've got a couple of trees which I'd like to string it up between. Um, and again, one of the reasons why I'm using the hammock, um, I do have a new tent to show you at some point, but I don't want to put the tent on the bluebells because I don't think that's fair. They're only here for a couple of weeks, so um, I'll let them do their thing and uh, I'll, I'll just sleep above them. Um, but anyway, I now, now need to go off and do some wood prep. And I do have a new saw. It was my birthday a couple of weeks ago and my, uh, my daughters and my wife all chipped in to buy me a new toy. Um, so I'll go and find some suitable pieces of wood and then I'll, uh, I'll bring you in on it. So this is my birthday present. It's uh, an Agawi saw. Um, it's one of these folding bow saws. Put the cover over there. So you just kind of unfold it, and you unfold this end, and it locks into place like that. And it's not very heavy. I suppose it's what three quarters of a pound, something like that. But uh, nice piece of kit, well made. I think it's made in America. There's a US patent on it anyway. But uh, yeah, this one's the Boreal 21 saw. Oops. Uh, the Boreal 21. So, I'll have a go at it. I found some oak, which I have on the sacrificial cutting block. So we'll see how we get on. Try not to tread on these bluebells. Nice. Cuts through it nicely. Hopefully it won't cut through my microphone cable. Knife 
through butter. So when it comes to taking it apart, you just hook out the end here and that folds over the blade. The blade folds back on itself and into the cross member. And you fold the handle back over and it's nicely collapsed. And then we obviously put it back in its storage bag. Because then the next time we want it, we know where it is. Et voilà. So yes, I'm rather pleased with that. It's uh, made some quite short work of cutting that out. And like I said, I've got some uh, some wood that I've brought from, from home. Well, I got it from the garage, really. So I'm going to start the fire now. In the, uh, <coughs> the bag of fire starting today, I've got some jute, ferrocerium rod, and some birch bark. Enough. Now, someone else... Someone commented um, about using the ferrocerium rod in a slightly different way from the way that I've been using it. And what they suggested was hold the striker steady and pull the ferrocerium rod away so it doesn't knock the tinder all over the place. Which, in hindsight, seems like quite a good idea. So I'm going to have a go at that today. If we put that in that little nest. Then we'll Give it a strike and see how we get on. So, I suppose it's going to be a bit more awkward with the. Oh, there we go. So, hopefully, the silver birch will get light. Just let that get going a bit, a little bit more. And smother it with some small sticks. I think that's oops. It's probably gonna be fine now. So let's just let that go. Yeah, uh, couldn't be easier. How was about that then? So there's another piece of kit that I got. Um my I've been using a, an Army Bergen, which is a PLCE one, and um, I noticed that it's extremely heavy before you've started putting anything in it. And uh, so I was on the lookout for a, a decent rucksack, but one that was a bit smaller. And this one is the 511 Rush 100, so it's a 60 litre backpack. Um, I did add that pouch on afterwards, and I bought this one with it as well. Um, but it's a really, really neat piece of kit. There's a zip around the bottom so you can get into the bottom section. And then they have this bit, which is, I think they call it an admin section. So you open it up and you can put your phone or whatever small pieces of equipment that you've got, maybe a lighter, um, charger or whatever, in there. Maybe it could, could be used as a cooking department, don't know. But I thought that was quite neat. And then... With the main pack, I have to be, make sure I don't uh, spill everything out. But uh, the main pack opens here, and it all opens forwards. So actually, I'll take that out because uh, I should be wanting that in a minute. But you can open the front pack out forward so that you can get access to things which are down here without having to unload everything, which I think is another neat feature. Um, it is surprisingly light. Um, and uh, I didn't want always to be carrying around, uh, I think those, PL Oops, those PLCE ones, I think they're about they're 100 litres or something like that. Um, and then there's a pouch in the top, which also has a fleece lined pouch. So um, you can put your spectacles in there, or you can put your phone in there, whatever. And there's another, um, I guess they call that the first thing out pouch. Um, it comes with these two as well, so they're a good size. There's another one on the other side. Um, Stress is not a review, I paid for this, um, but I just thought you might be interested. It also has these straps down the bottom so that you can, um, on the, the Army Bergen, I didn't have that, 
and so everything had to be inside the pack which meant that even something like the hammock here or a tent needed to be in the pack which it doesn't really need to be so that's outside um, it has a, a really neat way of um, tensioning up the shoulder straps and the waistband and you can also remove the waistband and take those two side pockets and attach those to the waistband if you're just going off on a, a little recce and want to take a few uh, essential bits with you but uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with it at the moment um, it's the first time out and it's the first time it's had anything in it but uh, it was really refreshing carrying that so prep wise for this delicacy um, I need to finely dice a medium sized onion. This is probably a bit small but uh, it should be okay. And if you don't want to cry when you're peeling onions, just leave the root end on because then the, uh, it doesn't release the toxins. At all. So when I finally dice it, so just start off by cutting the onion across. Oh, that's the onion bit. So we're making, making a bit of a mirepoix, uh, which probably sounds a bit fancy, but it's just the base of the, or uh, well, it'll form the base of the sauce. There's top, take the tops off, I don't want those bits. Um, and then just, sorry, I'm doing it in front of my hand, aren't I? Uh, I'll try doing it like that. So just cut it into four. And then just. You're not winning any competitions with the chopping, so don't worry um, too much. So it's time to sear these uh, lamb shanks. You can see the, the pot is very hot. I'll just take it off the heat a little bit. And let it will. There's a nice bit of colour on those now, so I'm just going to take those out for a minute whilst we get on with the, uh, the other bits. Then we hit it with the carrots. Let those go for a little bit. With garlic. We'll make sure we don't burn that. We're starting to get a little bit of colour on things. So now we're going with a, I think it's about a tablespoon of tomato puree. About that much. Kind of wind that around a bit. When you cook the tomato puree, it gets rid of a bit of the vinegariness that's in it. A couple of bay leaves and some mixed herbs. A couple of bits of rosemary. Just kind of wind that in there a bit. Looks a bit like a hedgerow surprise at the moment, doesn't it? A couple of bits of Christmas tree. And in a minute, we go in with the magic ingredient which is not Schweppes. So this is what makes the uh, loveliness of the sauce. This is port. So it's a, going to be a port sauce. But you have to uh, reduce it a bit. Just flambéed the, uh, the port there <laughs> to repatriate the, the lamb shanks in the cooking mixture and we add some beef stock a 
Now, I'm sure that there's someone that's going to say that's too much, but my experience the last time I did it was that it actually evaporated quite quickly. So that, in about three quarters of an hour, that will be down to that will be down at least uh, half an inch. So, on with the lid. And then we need to get the coals on the top of it. Now I have got a bit of a hack here. Because it's going to be on for a, probably the best part of four hours. Putting a little bit of charcoal on the lid of the Dutch oven. This means you don't have to have such a raging fire to keep making the coals. There's probably too many coals but that uh, stock needs to warm up so that should be fine. I just found a large patch of uh, wild garlic so I thought I'd pop some in the uh, in the pot and then I'll take the camera over and show you the wild garlic plantation oh look at that that's what we want it's a real gentle simmer so here it is loads of it the trouble is, again, this, this stuff doesn't like, stay out too long. And uh, strangely, it seems that where the wild garlic grows, the bluebells don't. The bluebells are back down there, as you can see, which is towards where I'm camped. Let me zoom in a bit. You can just see my chair there. Well, that's where the bluebells are. And there's wild garlic all around the outside. What I will say is that, I don't know whether it's because this bit is usually quite soggy. I don't know. Well, as you can imagine, that's, uh, that's quite a hectic uh, hour or two. Getting everything sorted and getting, that, uh, getting the supper on. So, uh, I thought it was time for a cup of tea. Cheers. Oh, nothing like... A blue can in the blue bells. <laughs> Absolutely cracking. There's no wind at all. The sun's sort of out, but it's not hot, it's just warm. So uh, I think in, a, in half an hour or so we'll put the hammock up so that that's that ticked off. Um, we'll leave Chef Richard to carry on with the food um, and uh, we'll just go over to the uh, the bushcraft bistro for supper a slightly new feature <laughs> to the videos but uh, yes we'll see what you think of it and I have got I've got something on the way from America which I don't believe has ever been used in this country um, and I think it will blow your minds. I, I'm confident that it will. Um, I have to practice with it a bit because uh, it's, it's, it has its, uh, its differences. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, there will be some really, really good videos coming up uh, within the next probably five or six weeks. Um, there'll be other videos that come before that, but... Uh, once these ones, once I start these, I think you'll understand. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I should leave you to enjoy the bluebells.
I did think I was going to have to use the whoopee slings today, but I think these two trees should be perfect. So I'm going to try it. I may end up eating my words. Hopefully it won't be all I'll be eating tonight. So anyone who doesn't do hammock camping, the reason you use the tree st straps is because they have a wide band on them so you don't damage the tree. Mm -hmm. I've already got carabiners on here. Oh, carabiners coming out of my ears. I might just make it. And they put the spreader poles in. Um. So they have these little pockets that you put them in. So you have one in that side. This goes in there. Oh, so open that side and that. Right. might actually be a little bit high. Something I didn't show you last time is how you fix the fly sheet on, on these things. You pass the carabiner through these two slots. Uh, so you there, those two slots. So you pass it through. And then back out the other side. And you kind of jiggle it. You get your carabiner all the way up. So it's like that. And then you hook your carabiner onto your tree strap. Like so. And that's how the fly sheet joins on. So make sure that the you've been framed moment is ready, just in case it collapses. It is actually just a little bit high, but uh, in fact that end's higher than the other end, so let's try it that way around. Oh, that's better. Oh, uh, that's absolutely cracking. So we've got all faithful, my enlightened equipment uh, quilt. Never leave home without it. And here is the, uh, again, it's something else which people forget about. And they take these ridiculous little air blow up pedal pillows. But this can make the complete difference between a good night's sleep and an awful one. And then a couple of things. Let's see, my trusty hat. But I've watched a lot of YouTube videos recently where people, um, the YouTubers, have been waking up in the morning and they get up and they say, oh, I was cold last night. I woke up at two o'clock in the morning. Get a hot water bottle. I know that it's not particularly masculine 
and not kind of rugged outdoors. But by goodness me, does it make a difference? You know, just a hot water bottle, you're warm all the way through the night. Um, and it, it transforms camping, it really does. And it's old school as well. You're going to boil the kettle for your hot chocolate that you're putting marshmallows in. So why not just fill a hot water bottle up? So much sense. So we'll pop that there for later. Um, right. Well, I think that's camp set up. That must be one of the easiest ones to do. I think it's even e easier than the Amok hammock. Because um, the Amok hammock is quite awkward to get everything into. Um, whereas that, job done. I like it. Good piece of kit. Very pleased with that. <sighs> Spud bashing. Uh, spuds are peeled. <clears throat> so I'm just going to chop them up into... smaller bits. It won't take as long to... Potatoes are all chopped up. Um, now in the last, when we were down in Cornwall, I was showing you this uh, Adolov cooker. And uh, I thought I'd bring that because it, it boils water really quickly. Um, and there's also something which I noticed. On the uh, Amazon website, it says that you shouldn't use the colour uh, the, the Coleman gas and that was what I was using down in Cornwall and I've since bought some some jet boil uh, some MSR no jet boil gas and uh, the difference is quite remarkable <laughs> so I thought I'd show you it working with the uh, jet boil gas It really does go off, whereas it didn't do that down in Cornwall. Um, you'll also notice that I bought a uh, set of feet for the gas bottle because I don't think it was safe without it. Well, it's just coming up on about four minutes, four, just under four and a half minutes, um, and it is quite full. Well, they're doing their thing. Now, something that you probably have never seen anyone bushcrafting use. <laughs> and I might get somewhat lambasted for this. But have you ever heard of a bushcraft candelabra? <laughs> Comes in kit form. You simply fit together. True bushcrafting style, you know, it's like a clipped together sort. And there you go, which is the perfect adornment for <clears throat> any budding bushcraft cook. So I'll just pop the candles in and I'll show you. So when you're dining out in the woods, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Oh dear. So this is going to be the uh, the bushcraft bistro for this evening. Okay, I've taken the lamb shanks out of the cooking liquor. I have somewhere. No, oh, there it is. I've strained the mirepoix and the herbs and stuff, and now I'm just just reducing this sauce because it's. Uh, it's not gloopy enough yet, and I don't want to use any thickeners, so I think the best way to do it is to reduce it. Mm. God, I'm going to be 
be nice with those lamb. That lamb finish these potatoes off. Right, I think that. You see how far it's reduced down. It's it's less than half now, which is perfect. So what we'll do is remove that this way. Pop that there. Hopefully that'll hurry that up. That can calm. That's hot. That's hot. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's time to plate up a small platter. mashed potato. Not one. Maybe just one. I don't know. What do you think? One or two? Maybe one to start with. Unfortunately I seem to have forgotten my tweezers so the vegetables will be... I suppose I could place them in the... bit nicer if they were placed. The star of the show, which is this jus or gravy. So just pour it all over. Look how much that's reduced. Oh, what a word. Let's just go a bit over here. Oh. So I have tried to light the candelabra, but uh, it does seem a little reluctant to stay alight. Got two of them going. <laughs> now, a meal like this, you just have to, don't you? <laughs> oh, fantastic. A little glass of rosé. I say. I bet you wish you were here. Cheers. Mm. Right, let's have a crack on this then. Oh, that's just falling apart. That sauce is so rich, that is fantastic. And this lamb is cooked to perfection. It was braised for about four, four and a quarter hours, I think. But that sauce, it's just so gooey and sticky. There now, look at this. It just falls apart. And that sauce, look at it just coats everything beautifully. Look at that glistening. This is bushcraft food. So welcome to the Bushcraft Bistro. Hmm. Oh, I'm looking forward to dining out like this again. Now, whilst you've seen me <laughs> make the lamb shanks, you may have guessed that I didn't make this. Not out here. Um, it's a, a lemon cheesecake with some white chocolate shards on it, I suppose, curls, and some uh, clotted cream. I thought it'd be quite nice to um, have something citrusy to cut through the the richness of that uh, that sauce with that lamb. It was delicious, absolutely delicious. Um, I don't remember having a sauce. In fact, no, once I thought I might have had a sauce like that with a a fillet steak about 25 years ago. Um, it was a plum sauce, I think. But uh, it, it, it takes a long time to make a sauce like that, so most people don't bother. But uh, that was really, really spectacular. Can't recommend that enough. So, right, I'm going to have my pudding now.
what it was supposed to do earlier. Well, it's about time to hit the hay. That was an absolutely fantastic day. I thoroughly enjoyed today. Um, the meal was unbelievable. Um, I just... I just spoke to Sarah and I said I think that's probably one of the best meals I've ever eaten. Um, that's probably hamming it up a bit, but it was it was un unbelievable. Um, I'm really looking forward to climbing into my lovely hammock. I've got my hot water bottle all made. I've just had my hot chocolate, and uh, the fire's just dying down now. So. Uh, there's not a breath of wind. I did light the candelabra earlier, as you'll have, as, as you'll see on the video. Um, so yeah, it's about uh, I think it's about half nine, quarter to ten, um, which is early, but been a long week. So uh, I'm going to turn in, and I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everyone. It's an absolutely belting day. Sun's out. And I had a lovely lie-in. It was lovely and comfortable. And uh, thanks to my hot water bottle, I was lovely and warm. Um, I think it dropped down to about, I don't know, it was probably only two or three degrees last night. Um, but uh, no, it's really comfortable. A few deer wandering around last night. There was a lot of barking going on um, about two o'clock in the morning which woke me up, but I uh, went back to sleep again quite quickly. So I'm just going to have a cup of coffee now. Alas, it's that time again. Um, I've tidied everything up and uh, I'm just about to depart. Um, it has been a fantastic camp, this one. I've, it's been a long time that I've wanted to camp out in the Bluebells, and uh, I finally uh, finally managed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please do share it with your friends on social media, um, and hopefully we can get the viewing and the subscribing up. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I hopefully see you on the next video. Bye-bye.